It might seem like a fun idea to visit haunted locations, to see the mummified people of Pompeii or even walk around a graveyard at 3am, but there are some locations you should never visit. If you value your soul please don't go to these top 5 haunted locations you should never visit. Let's jump in. Coming in at number 5 we have Capuchin Monastery Catacombs, Palermo, Italy. This location is not for the squeamish. The Capuchin Monastery Catacombs is home to thousands of well dressed corpses, one of the world's most bizarre and morbid tourist attractions. After walking through the monastery you descend into the catacombs where you have the chance to share small enclosed space with thousands of corpses that have been well preserved. Some hanging from the walls, some laying down and others sat on benches. They believe that having the dead on display like this shows respect to them. Here nothing stands between the living and the dead, other than a sign asking people to be respectful. The ill lit musty catacombs have been separated into a few corridors each one hosting a specific type of person. There is a room for religious figures, mainly those affiliated with the monastery, for professionals such as doctors and a room for women. There is a corpse of a person that's said to be so well preserved that she simply looks like she is sleeping. She has been given the name Sleeping Beauty. I don't know about you but that sounds pretty terrifying. It is believed that the particularly dry atmosphere allowed for the natural mummification of the bodies. Initially priests would lay the dead on shelves and allow them to drip until they were completely depleted of bodily fluids. A full year later the dried out corpse would be rinsed with vinegar before being redressed in their best attire and sent to their proper room to stand for eternity. Who knows how many of their spirits still roam the catacombs with no way out? It's not a question I want to find the answer to. In at number 4 we have Black Swan Hotel in York, England. The city of York was built back in 71 AD and was founded between 8000 and 7000 BC. First inhabited by Romans, then Vikings, it has a long history making it the perfect place for ghosts and spirits to roam. Some have even claimed that it is the most haunted city in the world. Just one of the many haunted locations in York is the Black Swan Pub. It was built for William Bowes, a merchant and sheriff of York in 1417, who also became Lord Mayor in 1428. There are few unusual features and stories surrounding the pub. There is a passageway that was built under the building. It is unclear why this was built, but there have been rumours it once led to the church. It has since been sealed off, but you can still see the stairs leading down under the building and a hallway leading off into the distance. The pub was used as a horse refuge during World War II, and there are even stories of men coming to the pub to auction off their wives during 1884. Through the history of the building, there have been a few spirits who have decided to stick around. One of the regulars is a workman in a bowler hat who regularly fidgets and tuts, as if he is waiting waiting for someone to arrive. He is often seen walking from room to room or waiting at the bar before fading away. No one knows who this spirit is but it is believed he has been here since 1850 when bowler hats were introduced. Some say he resembles Charlie Chaplin. But he is not the only spirit who inhabits the pub, also frequently seen as a young woman in a long white dress. She stands at the bar in the back room gazing into the fireplace. You can see the grief in the woman's face, she appears to be dealing with some kind of loss. This is just one of the many haunted buildings around York so travel here at your own risk. In at number 3 we have the Alaskan Hotel in Alaska. Built in 1913 during the gold rush, the Alaskan Hotel is the oldest hotel in the area. The hotel was built to be a luxury experience for those passing by as they advertised as a pocket version of the finest hostelry on the west coast. The high fashion and glitz were a paltry concealment for the legal process and sale of illicit substances that went on there throughout its history. The hotel overcame many issues that it faced since opening, one being the 1980 imposition of bone dry prohibition. They turned their bar into a cafe serving soda while also running a speakeasy like most of the previous bars at the time. The Alaskan hotel was a brothel twice in her history, first legally and second not legal in 1977 which was shut down by the fire marshal. There is one main soul who inhabits the Alaskan hotel today and that is a gold miner's wife. She lived at the hotel while waiting for him to return. When he did not return, she began to support herself through prostitution. But then he did return. When he returned to his wife he was furious with what she had been doing and then murdered her in the hotel. There have since been a number of sightings of her at the hotel. She is said to be very angry and restless. When she is around the air goes cold and some have reported hearing footsteps wandering the halls. Some even hear crying coming from the walls but it is unclear where the noise is coming from. There is also a number of abandoned mines located near the town so if you are looking for ghosts this is the place to be. 
Coming in at number 2 we have City of the Dead, North Ossetia, Russia. Not many people have been to the City of the Dead, it is a dangerous and long journey to reach the village. There are also myths and legends warning that those who do reach the city never return. Reaching this mystifying destination requires a 3 hour drive, taking you down a dangerous and hidden road. It is located in North Ossetia in Russia. If you do manage to reach the city you will come across many white huts that look like houses, however they are not. These are actually stone crypts. It is said that in the 18th century a plague hit the city leaving no one behind. The clans built quarantine houses for the sick, they would bring the food but not the freedom to move about until death claimed their lives. The even sadder side is that people who did not have family to build the hut or bring them food simply went to the large graveyard and simply waited for death. It was a very slow and painful way to go. For those who dare to visit the city a little well was created outside of each home. If you drop a coin in the well and you hear it hit the stone at the bottom then the person who died here went to heaven. If you do not hear a noise then this indicates that the spirit did not pass on and may still be in the village. My advice would be don't visit this city, we don't need an 18th century disease. And lastly in at number 1 we have Crater Rock Castle in Victoria, British Columbia. What first appears to be a beautiful castle is actually a haunted home with a tragic past. The Craig de Rock Castle was built in the 1800s as a home for a wealthy family, coal industrialist Robert Dunsmuir and his wife Joan. It was built over 2,300 meters and comprises 39 rooms. However, Robert died 17 months before the construction was completed. The original architect of the castle, Warren Haywood Williams, also unfortunately died before the finalization of the home. His son James and Alexander decided to finish the castle after their father's death. Robert's death caused a lot of trouble within the family. His sons James and Alex were disappointed that their father's business and assets had been left to their mother. They claimed that they had an oral agreement from their father that they would receive the family business. For the following years they tried countlessly to get the family business from their mother and after 7 years they finally received the title to the San Francisco company. Feeling financially stable Alex finally married his partner of 20 years Josephine, however their marriage only lasted 6 weeks as he died on their honeymoon in New York. When he died the family was torn apart once more over his will. Joan and James fought for years going to the highest court level. They did not speak during the legal battle and then finally Joan passed away in 1908 in Craig Doric Castle in Victoria where she lived for 18 years. It was believed that James wouldn't attend her funeral, however he did at last. The house has now been taken over by the Craig Doric Castle Historical Museum Society. There have been many ghost stories presumed to be connected to the Dunsmuir family. One of the main spectres is a woman who walks down the main staircase in a ball gown. No one has seen her in any other part of the castle and she never goes up the stairs. Could it be the ghost of Joan going to greet her husband? In the basement of the home there have been sightings of a little girl crying, although they disappear if she hears anyone approaching, there have been multiple sightings of her. She is believed to be the youngest daughter of Robert who died just months after he did. As well as these sightings there have also been other weird goings on around the castle. Often people hear the crying of a child from various parts of the castle. Objects would also move on their own when no one was around. Some can also hear a piano being played in the dining room when no one is present, but there is no piano in the castle. It seems there are many ghosts of the Dunsmuir family within the castle walls who don't want to leave their home. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with that list? What haunted location scares you the most? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below, and perhaps we can do part two. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you later.